Hi, um, today I want to talk about some CPU BPF production surprises uh, we have seen uh, in matter. Um, so first one is about the C group get and set sort of uh, BPF program. So what it can do for us is uh, we can intercept, there's a hook in the syscall uh, get and set sort of. Uh, we find it super useful. We are, we are a big user of it. Um, so one of the common use case we have is to uh, create a uh, uh, matter only um, uh, socket options. So we do some special things for it. For example, um, in our get sort of BPI program could understand a specific um, internal only op name and then do something special. So the example here is uh, get something from the socket local storage and then return it um, to the user space. Um, so it all works well. Um, we test it in a lot of machine, like the whole cluster. It was working uh, fine until one day um, a random service tried to do something in a sub, sub percentage, less than 1% of the fit. Uh, randomly doing something like this. Um, then it it uh, create an incident and it fell. Um, and then we trace down because the uh, BPF code path in the in the kernel uh, return e for even even if you go back to the to the um, earlier program, BPF program we have, it doesn't change anything in 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 that particular option name that's causing this e for it the BPF pro program is not interested in it. Um, it doesn't touch even anything, but it's still creating an unspecified error from the BPF code path. Um, so uh, what we told the team to do is for uh, for the option length larger than the page size, we have to set it to zero so that the BPF code path will ignore this option name. Um, this is a surprise for the BPF program users, right? Because they ask why only why only page size option name, but not everything else. Um, so if we look at the kernel implementation details, what before before um, the BPF get sort of program get called, so um, the kernel does some preparation work before it calls the BPF program. So one of the thing it does is, um, for example, for the get sort of, one of the uh, the things it does in the kernel is it need to allocate a kernel memory, um, and then copy the whatever option links from the from the user memory to to this newly allocated kernel memory, so that the BPF program can read from this uh, newly allocated kernel memory, and this allocation is limited to uh, 4K. Um, so if the if the um, BPF program doesn't change this uh, uh, option name back to something smaller than 4K, um, the kernel assume the BPF program didn't do didn't do something. Did it assume the BPF program did something incorrect because the option links is inconsistent with whatever buffer it can. It can read or write, so it will return e fault. Um, so that's a relief fix from Stan, which is uh, to to um, sort of ignore the e fault uh, for this particular case when the origin uh, option length is larger than page size. Because most of the time, I would say 99.9% of the time, it's just the BPF program is not interested in this large opening and just forgot to update opening to zero. Um, so going forward, um, can we provide better user experience to, to the user? So if we go back to think about why we need to do uh, K-malloc, because it's because the BPI program cannot sleep, right? So we the BPI pro program cannot directly read the um, user, user space um, cannot directly read the option value in the user space memory. Um, because of that, then we need to allocate um, kernel memory for the BPF program to read. Um, so to bound uh, how much it can allocate, we, we bound it by page size, and then we also limit 
we can also limit how much we don't uh, do too many, too much mem copy if we don't have to, because um, we don't, most of the time, the BPL program are not interested to most of the uh, socket option. It, it may only interested in one or two or three out of like tens or twenties possible uh, socket options. Yeah. So, um, so the thing is, can we allocate? Can we can we avoid this uh, memory allocation at all? Um, can the BPL program directly read from the from the um, from the user's face memory for the option value? Um, so if we make make this CPF BPL program sleepable properly, I think we we should be able to do that. Um, um, the newer L LSM C group is already sleepable, but the older C group BPL program is not uh, sleepable. So probably something we can improve. So for reading, for reading, I think it should be doable uh, to, to read the user space memory. But how about uh, for the BPL program that need to change the, the uh, option value? Uh, for get sort op, can we directly write to the, to the uh, user option value? Um, so for set sort op, what, what happens if, if, if the BPL program want to, want to uh, create a new option value which is longer than or larger than the uh, user space option value? I mean, what, what, what's, how do we deal with this case? Do we, do we need to go back to uh, do k malloc um, when the BPL program do want to write a larger option value in this case? And the question I have is, does it make sense to fit all this in the Dane Pointer API? Yeah. Comment, feedback? For SETSACOPT, why do you need, uh, what is the case for having OPTWAL larger than the original user buffer? Because you need to crop it anyway, right? If not, otherwise you risk overriding something in the user. I don't know. Yeah, for SETSACOPT, it's like eventually it will be, you may want to. Or I guess if. Because I eventually see. you may not to, you may want to Fast fall back to the kernel. Yeah. Set saw up to do it. I don't know. I, we don't have this use case, but the original, the current code okay. seems to accommodate this. Yeah, I guess. I guess the in existing path, we we have this hack where like, oh, if the buffer is smaller than I don't know four bytes, allocate right, you allocate sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. yeah so yeah, which is like maybe we should not even uh, accommodate this yeah. case now. For now, if we do that. Yeah. Yeah, but I think that I guess maybe we need to think over it again, because right, remember when we started those sets of uh, hooks. We still had this ugly thing where most gets a cop, sets a cop had this like get from user, put to the user, and there's been some rework to kind of unify all this, right? There's some um, some abstractions right now we use, right? Sock something, which depending, it, it basically knows where the buffer is in the kernel in the user space. Uh, so maybe we should plumb this abstraction to the BPF as well somehow, I don't know. Or maybe yeah, maybe the DIN pointer is a nice abstraction. Yeah. Right now, it's always right into the kernel space, right? Yeah. So if we check out the the use case that the set sort may may create longer options, then can we can we always write to the user space instead? But it can fault as well, right? If you write to the user space. Yeah, but same for the get sort of, yeah. Okay. When we get sort of, eventually we need to write back to the user space anyway, yeah. So that may fault as well. If we fault, then, then we, we can re uh, Yeah, I mean, as long as your program is sleepable, then we can, we can yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think all this better UI ne needs sleepable BPF in this place. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not great. There's a bunch of hacks we have to do and then, yeah, in this state.
So at the DIN point, then you would basically have like the user memory versus kernel memory, and then you could be and then you could decide where to write it to, or would that be the idea? Or yeah, if if we can take out the the use case that the set sort may may need to write a larger op value, I think we can always the the DIN point the DIN point can always stay with the user memory. S sorry, um, are you, do, do you want to write to the user memory? Yeah. What if another thread unmaps it? What if another what? If another thread unmaps the user memory. Yeah, but that will be the same case as whatever the kernel is doing also, right? How is it, why is it different for the DPF program? Want to write to the user memory? Because you would page fault from the kernel? But the kernel also, for example, if if the kernel is handling the get sort op, the get sort will also copy to the user memory, right? How, how is it different? Wait, I don't think it's the The copy will what? I think there's also another case, if I remember correctly, it's just been a while for, I think maybe it was the get sock opt code when the kernel actually errors out, we don't even, we cannot, I think maybe overwrite this error or like give some user, give some buffer back to user space. I think there was like a corner case like this, right? Where, where it would also have been really useful to support it. So. This one was added to fix, right? There was a case where when you don't pass the buffer, but you only want to read the kind of the size of the buffer back, it wasn't handled correctly, but it's, you know, I think it's it's a corner case. I think this is more like kind of problematic in the sense that buffer management, how do we manage it in a non-sweepable hook where it's user memory and it's, So I have the second one, which is the last one. Um, so another one on the top of is the C group sort ops, so end with an S. So it's nothing re related to the socket options. So it's a, it's a BPF hooks in the TCP stack. Um, so what happened is um, it has a uh, like eight bit frag in the TCP socket. So essentially what it does is like if you turn a particular bit in this uh, frags on, so the TCP stack will call you uh, in some TCP state. So, um, so here's a bit uh, s all these possible callback frags um, that is available in the kernel. So, uh, for example, when the state change from um, uh, sync receive to to establish or or to um, to some other code state. So the one that um, I'm going to talk about, use it as a sample, is about the header options, write header options. So you can turn on a thread to say, I want to write um, some TCP header option for for some of the packet. If you're not, after you're done, you can turn it off so that the TCP stack will stop calling uh, your BPF program when you need to write uh, some header, when you need to write the TCP header or send some TCP header ho out. <coughs> So here's the current API to, um, as a helper to, to set these frags. Um, so bitwi auth, so it's like the usual thing, you bitwi auth it to, to turn on a frag, um, and then you and bitwi and mask it out to, to turn it off. Um, so here's um, some use case to, to solve the problem. So, um, so here are two different DPAP program. So both of them is um, want to turn on the uh, right header options frag uh, for the doing the listen callback, so that um, so that both of the BPA program will have a chance to write the YSO TCP header options um, 
doing the freeway handshake. So, but one of the program, program A is after the freeway handshake, so it will get an established callback, right? Then, then program A say, hey, um, uh, I, I, I still want to keep writing the header, uh, so it'll, it'll keep it on. Uh, for program B, uh, for program B, it say, okay, I'm not interested to to write any more header options uh, after the after the Fury handshake, so it turn it off. So, so the problem come in. Um, so A run first, it keep it on, but B run later, um, it turn it off. Then it end up program A will uh, will never get the call back also. So um, we. I talk about that with the with both teams that added this C group BPI program. So end up, uh, we conclude that we once a frag is on, we can never turn it off because we don't know whether there are other BPI program in front of it uh, is interested in it or not. And and then we store something in the socket local storage. So for each of this BPI program, it stores something in the socket local storage. So they re remember, um, does it still, uh, does it still interested in this callback uh, for this socket? Um, um, yeah, if it say, okay, for some program A, it say, okay, um, I start a boolean and it's true, so it will, it, will, it will keep writing header. For program B, it will stay, it will start a false in the socket uh, storage. Uh, and then it will stop writing the header after the freeway handshake. Um, yeah, I don't have any better idea how to tackle it now. Um, so um, I wonder if you guys have experience on, on this or you guys have idea how to how to better implement the kernel. <laughs> yeah, I told you offline that we, we hit the same problem, not with the header, but with some other callback I don't remember. Yeah, and I guess for us it's easy that it's also kind of a controlled environment where we can say, okay, we know we need this set of flags, so this program, we go and fix it. But I don't know, maybe when we load the program, maybe we can add some new mask that you pass, saying, okay, this is a minimal set of bits that I need to, and then uh, when you try to disable them, you get an error or something. Yeah. But I guess it's probably essentially the same as your first point where you just keep it forever on and don't reset. But at least it's more like at the API level you present to the kernel a, a contract saying this is the bits that I will be using and just then turn it on. Maybe you can play with the like this whole C group inheritance story. Like if if, if you're attaching with an override that's uh, or if you attach with inheritance you or those flags. But again, I don't know, like in the wild, if anyone is using this. <laughs> if it's me and you, or it's it's like how how big is the problem in it? Is yeah. I mean, do you do you use Optilia in those socalls? Yeah, we've been using them a lot for like congestion control experiments, some parameters tuning. We do some contracting on them sometimes too. I had a question about the BPFSK storage. Uh, is that associated with just a socket FD, or is there like a f does the key also include a patch type? Yeah, in this case, it will be like each program will will have its own SK storage map, right? so you know which SK storage map is should look for its own boolean. So if there are two programs with the same Attach type, uh, would they get their own copy of the SK yeah, storage? They, they, they will have its own copy in, in, the, in the storage, right? so they don't interfere with each other. So, but to, um, but to extend the helper to then lock the state once you set the flag, I mean, it doesn't really help because you're in some cases you want to disable it again, right? I mean. Yeah. Um, so essentially if it, if it locked the, that bit, right, I mean that bit is owned by that BPL program. Right? So yeah. 
Yeah, but it, but if compatible, like, it, I think it's still compatible. Like if it's enabled, then it's always enabled. It. So let's say one one yeah. one program lock it to lock it disable and then lock it, then then our program may do want to enable it. If we had infinite storage compute, whatever, right? What we really want is to store this mask per program, then yeah. uh, maybe that's not a lot of storage, right? If it's we stick it somewhere in the socket, is it is it too much? Yeah, y if we have, we can add something in the socket, right? We we can increase the granularity of yeah. of this bit. I mean, we still use single bit mask for like efficient. Right. Data plane yeah. style, but then when we can actually change it, we, we I think we can afford probably to store all the masks and then do the validation saying, okay, this program really is using still this bit, so let's not clear it off. Yeah, potentially could be like the this BPR program itself can, can like install its own function pointer callback and then could be an array or something like that. And then, and then if if this array is larger than zero, then we turn on that bit. 